You forced me to wager my life against a thousand dollars. Now you can wager yours against 30 miles of desert with a companion who hates you and half a canteen of water. Have Gun, Will Travel. Starring Mr. John Daner as Paladin. San Francisco, 1875, the Carlton Hotel, headquarters of a man called Paladin. Oh, uh, Mr. Paladin, this gentleman, uh, Mr. Morgan, look for you. Mr. Morgan, how are you? Hello there. I was looking for you in the lobby, and I asked the boy here where I might find you. Oh, I tell you, Mr. Paladin often take a place of concealment behind party palm with a chessy <laughs> Yes, I hope I'm not interrupting. No, not at all. You bring two brandies, please. Hey, boy. Oh, yes, sir. Sit down, Mr. Morgan. Thank you. So, what can I do for you? Well, I'm leaving for Silver City early tomorrow morning with my fiance. You could see to it that I get there alive. Well, uh, there's uh, no need to go into all the details of the background, but the situation basically is that uh, my railroad holdings are considerable. A man named Danbury and his syndicate are determined to buy me out, and I don't want to sell. It seems to me that's your privilege. Yes, but Danbury's the kind of man who gets what he wants, one way or another. There have been attempts on my life recently. Mr. Danbury has peculiar business methods. I have narrowly escaped a bullet on three different occasions, Paladin. The latest this morning. Three misses isn't a very good average. Perhaps they're just trying to frighten you into selling. That's what I thought the first two times, but not now. Uh, will you accompany us to Silver City, Mr. Paladin? I'll pay whatever you ask. I'll be ready to leave at sunup. <laughs> Everywhere you go, across the country trip or across the street party, you carry the fun with you when you own a Columbia stereophonic high-fidelity phonograph. There's a marvelous selection of seven new portable models in smart new color combinations at your Columbia phonograph dealer from which you may choose. Each one is a masterpiece of design and beauty. More quality, more features, and more styling have been built into these sturdy portables than ever before. How much fun you'll have enjoying all the wonderful new sound of stereo records. Regular records take on new beauty, too, when played on handsome Columbia portables. You'll be amazed at the big console sound that is reproduced by Columbia portable stereophonic high-fidelity phonographs. You'll thrill to the excitement of Stereo One by Columbia, number one in the wonderful world of sound. And Columbia portables are economical, too. Prices start as low as $24.95. See them and hear them at your Columbia Phonograph dealer. Silver City was a two-day ride through a hot, dry stretch of desert. Morgan drove a buckboard with Stacy Neal, his fiancée, on the seat beside him. I rode alongside, trying to keep out of the dust that boiled up. There wasn't much chance that an attempt would be made on his life out here. Nothing moved. Even the lizards had taken cover from the heat. Morgan! Yeah? Those willows off to the left will stop for water. All right. Oh, ah. Ooh, no. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, ah. Can I give you a hand, Miss Neal? Uh, thank you. Uh. It's not much of a spring, is it? No, but it, it's the last water between here and rough and ready. Rough and ready. There's the next town. <laughs> we'll stay there tonight and go on to Silver City in the morning. Oh, that spring looks good to me. You know, men come to the desert in search of gold. <laughs> Maybe this is the real treasure out here. Water. I think the desert presents a challenge to come out and fight it. I could beat it, I'd wager. Darling, aren't you happy there's no one here to call that particular bet? <laughs> yeah, I think we'd better get moving. Why, what's the hurry? Look behind Huh? The rider on that far rise. How long has he been there? I noticed him just after we stopped. 
I suppose he's been following us. Maybe. Chances are he's just another traveler heading for this spring. I don't like it. Well, the town's straight ahead. After the horses are watered, the canteens are filled, you go on. What are you going to do? Double back. Do a little checking. I backtracked for some distance, then stopped by a sandstone bluff to wait for the man riding down the trail toward me. When he drew alongside, he reined in. Something I can do for you? Yeah. Just give me a little information, like uh, who you are, where you're headed, and why. That's a lot of information to give out to a stranger. My name is Paladin. You're still a stranger to me. But I don't mind telling you I'm Howard Gorman. I've heard of you and your gun. Well, now. Twelve men, isn't it? Yes. Uh Uh-huh. Come to think of it, maybe it's about time I started thinking about adding that lucky 13th. Oh? There's something about nosy people. I got the idea that maybe you were following us. Why'd I want to follow you? I'm not sure. But it's my business to find out. That's fine. I like to know you're tending to your business. But just stay out of mine. There's something about nosy people gets me riled. Yeah. Rough and Ready was the only town within a good many miles. And it boasted just one hotel. So I wasn't too surprised to find Gorman in the dining room when we went in to dinner. He was sitting at a corner table, deep in conversation with a well-dressed man. He keeps looking over here. Uh, that's the man who was following us? Yes. Name's Howard Gorman. Oh. He certainly looks as if he knows how to handle those guns he's wearing. He does. He has quite a reputation as a gun. Well, Danbury hired him, I'm sure of it. Say, hey, Morgan, do you know the man with him? No, never seen him before. Paladin, he's coming over here. Paladin? Stand up. Morgan, take Miss Neal and get out of the way. Well, I... Do as I say. Come on, Stacy. Paladin? You're making a mistake, Gorman. You going to stand up? I'd rather finish my dinner. It's finished. Uh, you shouldn't do that to good food. Well? We'll have it your way. I told you I'd killed 12 men, remember? Well, this is number 13. <laughs> Winston tastes good like a cigarette should because There's filter blend up front Up front ahead of the filter And the flavor you get in a Winston cigarette comes from filter blend Filter blend means fine tobacco Filter blend up front And the flavor you get in a Winston cigarette comes from filter blend Filter blend is a mighty good reason for you to smoke Winston because it means tobacco specially processed for filter smoking. A Winston secret. You get Winston's own pure white modern filter plus the rich, delightful flavor of fine tobacco. There's filter blend up front, up front ahead of the filter. And the fun you get in a Winston cigarette comes from filter blend. And makes Winston taste good like a cigarette should. Winston tastes good like a cigarette should. I'd been forced to kill a man, and I wasn't sure why. It was a fair fight. Gorman drew first. But somehow it didn't make any sense, and I didn't like it. Later, I went to the bar and ordered a bottle and a glass. Uh, Paladin. Oh, Morgan. Drink? Oh, no, no, thanks. 
Paladin, I think we should discuss a little business. What are you going uh, to do, dear? Talk him out of his fee to cover your losses? Stacy. Now, uh, Paladin, here is your pay in this envelope. Well, you're very generous, Mr. Morgan, but I haven't finished the job. How's that? Well, our arrangement was for Silver City. Oh, oh, well, it doesn't matter now. It's, uh, it, it's ended. I don't understand. Uh, Gorman is dead. Th that, that is, there's no danger now. Morgan, if it had been Gorman shooting at you back there in San Francisco, he wouldn't have missed. Uh, no matter, Paladin. It's, it's finished. Come along, Stacy. Not now. Well. <laughs> Very well. Oh, Stacy, don't bore Mr. Paladin. You know why I'm not going with him? Because he's hit me for the last time. Hit you? I know how he is when he's been crossed or when things don't go his way. But... Uh... Don't look so shocked, Mr. Paladin. Surely you know there are men like that. He's rotten. Maybe I'm rotten, too. I put up with him because he was rich. But I've had enough. Tonight was too much. Tonight? Oh, you still don't understand, do you? I guess not. Do you remember the man sitting at the table with the gunman? Yes. His name is Shawcross. He's Sid Morgan's business partner. Business partner? But Morgan said that I he didn't... I know. He said he'd never seen him before. They're two of the same kind, those men, sporting gentlemen. It was a bet. A bet? They'd heard of your reputation with a the gun. They knew Gorman was good and could be hired to kill, so they set it up for you to shoot it out and made a wager on the outcome. Morgan lost. You mean this was all set up? Yes. I killed a man to provide an evening's entertainment? Yes. They've been doing things like that for years. And getting away with it. Oh, it's over, Paladin. You might as well forget it. Forget it? They didn't break any law. There's no way to reach them. There never is. Stacy? Morgan! Come down here. Yes? I was very interested in what Miss Neal had to say. Oh. She told you, huh? <laughs> Well, you've no complaint, Paladin. You were well paid. Paid for what, Mr. Morgan? To kill a man for a sideshow? Well, I didn't realize you gunmen drew a fine line. Well, right now it might be a pleasure to kill. You're wearing a gun. Why don't you draw? I have no reason to draw against you, Paladin. But, oh! Now you have a reason. I won't draw, Paladin. I won't give you the excuse to shoot me. There's no way, Paladin, unless you choose to commit a real murder. I spent a long night with no sleep and an anger that kept growing. But finally, I had to face the fact that probably the lady was right. It was over, and I should forget it. It was early morning when I stopped at a desk on my way out of the hotel. Hey, yeah, lady, Miss Neal, has she come down yet? Come down? Oh, yes, yeah, sir. All of them did. They left in a buckboard before dawn, uh, like two, three hours ago. What do you mean, all of them? Well, uh, lady and Mr. Morgan and Mr. Shawcross. They all left together? Yeah. Uh, lady, poor little thing. Poor little thing? What do you mean? Well, she was crying. I kind of got the notion she'd no cotton to the idea of going alone. Have them bring my horse around. I have some riding to do. Car owners, 
Have you ever heard of K-Site Smooth Seal? Why, no. Why, no. Is it new? What does it do? Well, this is off the record. Just between us boys, your automatic transmission, does it ever make a noise? You mean a little kind of grinding? Does that little chatter matter? I hear a very weird whir sometimes. It doesn't sound good, boys, but let's be sure. When you're sitting at the light and it goes to green, you put your foot down hard. Have you ever felt a sort of a jerk, a kind of a jar, or heaven help you, a real thud bump? Oh, I've felt uh, it. Oh, me too. I've had it, stranger. What do we do? Well, don't buy a horse and don't trade your car. Just get yourself some new K-Side Smooth Seal. New K-Side Smooth Seal? New K-Side Smooth Seal? New K-Side Smooth Seal? How will that help? Why, it's made to soften those shrunken seals, which are apt to leak when there's power on the wheels. It stops those thud bumps, jerks, and jars that are apt to creep into these modern cars. Why, this K-Side Smooth Seal in one application can pack them all off on a long vacation, and it's less than $2 at your service station. A little new K-Side Smooth Seal, boy? Come on. I'll go. And if it doesn't work, you get double your money back. I had no trouble picking up the tracks of the buckboard, but my travel was slow. I wasn't quite sure what I was looking for until I found it. And then I realized I'd had a hunch that was correct. She was lying just off the trail. Stacy. Stacy. Here. Here's water for you. Water. Yeah. Now take it easy. No, not too much now. Good. This. This was his way of getting even for what I told you. Yes, I realize that. I guess it doesn't matter. I guess I asked for it. Of course it matters. Stacy, you think you can stand up? Yes, I think so. Right, here, let me help you. Uh, uh, uh. A little wobbly, huh? A little wobbly. Where are we going? I'm going to help you on my horse. Then we're going to find Mr. Morgan and Mr. Shawcross. You'll never be able to catch up with no, me. No, not on the trail. But we can cut across the desert and head them off. You feel able to travel? Let's go. It was a hard ride. But when the buckboard came into the turn where the trail leveled off to border a dry lake, we were waiting. Stacy, stay back. Hold it! Well, I mean, what is this? If I fire again, Morgan, it won't be in the air. Now, don't be hasty, Mr. Powell. Yes, yeah, Shawcross, I understand. This gun won a bet for you. Gives you some respect for it, huh? All right, get down. A paladin, whatever it get is. Get down. Throw your guns on the ground. Uh, a paladin. Paladin, wait now. You're, you're a smart man. And we have money, paladin. We have lots of money. And so I understand. I'm sure you're a reasonable man. Certainly, but I'm also curious. I'm curious as to just how far your money will go in protecting you. Let us go on to Silver City. You just name a price. Silver City? Yes. Now, I'll show you a shortcut. Oh? Uh -huh. Silver City is due east, across this dry lake. 30 miles, exactly. About a, about a three-day walk. Well, you better get started. Walk? Are you insane? I told you, I'm curious. You left Stacy to take her chances with the desert with no water. Well, but Pelican, You're going to have better odds. I'll give you a canteen. This is murder. Oh, no, no, no. It's a wager. I made a bet with myself that two men carrying a canteen of water could walk 30 miles across this desert. You can't mean that. Oh, but I do. All right. You're going to force us to do this, Paladin? I am. Very well. In spite of what your intentions might be, we will consider it a challenge, Shawcross. All right. The canteen, Paladin. Here. Thank you. Let's just understand this much, Shawcross. We make it to nightfall before taking any water. Yes. The important thing is not to lose our heads. By all means. One thing, Paladin. You'll pay for this. Suppose you get started. Yeah. Paladin. Yes? It is murder. No. That son will kill them. No, Stacy. They'll destroy themselves. Well, 
We watched the figures of the men grow small in the distance. And then I tied my horse on behind the buckboard and we started out across the dry lake, driving slowly behind them, keeping them always in sight. Hours passed, and the sun beat down without mercy. And more hours passed. Their plan didn't seem to work. What's that? Saving the water, have you noticed? You can see them passing the canteen back and forth. Yes. Oh, Stacy. I don't belong here. Where? In the judgment seat. Nah, I'm going after them. I thought you would. Come on. Paladin! Paladin, look! Oh, oh no! Hurry, you've got oh. to stop him! Gah! Gah! Higo! Morgan! Morgan! He's dead. Yes. Yes, I killed him. Took two swallows of water. He was only supposed to take one. I killed him with this rock. And I guess you're not beyond the law this time, Morgan. Two swallows. The agreement was one. Come on. And now, the Bickerson. <laughs> John Bickerson, I can't stand it. Mm, what's the matter, Blanche? What's the matter? It's that horrible snoring. Must be that fat guy next door. I'll fix him. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Why did you close the window, John? You said the neighbors were snoring. Oh, silly, they're on vacation. And I've been worried they might have car trouble on their trip. She's worried. Before they left, Harry took the car into his GM dealers for guardian maintenance. Right now, they're offering performance service specials just so summer driving will be trouble-free and worry-free. You think guardian maintenance is all right, don't you? All right? Why, it's the best kind of service for the best kind of cars, even at 3 o'clock in the morning. Now, good night, Blanche. We recommend a daytime call on your GM dealer for educated service by trained mechanics using special tools and factory-approved parts. If you own a Chevy, Pontiac, Olds, Buick, or Cadillac, get guardian maintenance. Have Gun, Will Travel. Created by Herb Meadow and Sam Rolfe, is produced and directed in Hollywood by Norman MacDonald and stars John Daner as Paladin with Ben Wright as Hayboy. Tonight's story was written by Dennis and Terry Sanders and adapted for radio by Ann Dowd. Featured in the cast were Lawrence Dobkin, Lynn Allen, Barney Phillips, and Vic Perrin. Hugh Douglas speaking. Join us again next week when CBS Radio presents Have Gun, Will Travel. Thank you.